start with Sundance Resources because it's Chinese suitor again delaying financial commitments. Is this deal going to go through? Well, the delays just continue, and this is becoming a very, very long, drawn-out process now. Uh, they were due to secure their financing. This was supposed to be by the 1st of October. This is now delayed, looking like it's going to come around in the middle of October, they're saying now. This is to uh, secure Sundance's uh, iron ore project in Central West Africa. They need to come up with the $1.45 billion for the deal. Now, uh, the delay now, middle of October, they're saying because of this Chinese holiday this week, um, as well as some uh, specifics over the deal itself. That's why they've delayed uh, coming across with this letter commitment of finance for the deal. Uh, now, this deal, as I said, has been very long and drawn out. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of government approvals uh, to tick off, which have been done now. And this financing now remains as the big hurdle left for this deal. Um, and if you just look at the share price action in this in Sundance Resources shares, uh, this deal never really looked like it had a great chance of going through. Uh, the original deal was uh, around 57 cents a share. That's been reduced back to 45 cents a share now. But a lot of that time while the deal was standing at 57 cents, uh, Sundance shares trading on average around that 40 to 45 cent a share level, which is something like a 25 percent discount to the offer price. So the share price telling you there, there are uh, significant hurdles to overcome and the likelihood of the deal coming through, certainly some questions over that. Uh, I mean, falling iron ore prices we've seen over the past, uh, this, this year so far, that's why we've seen that reduced offer down to 45 cents. And if we look in the situation where there are prolonged uh, lower iron ore prices, it's going to be undeveloped iron ore projects which are most at risk, like this development in Central West Africa, which around $4.7 billion is needed to, uh, to bring online, including around 500 kilometres worth of rail line and a deep water port. So today, another delay uh, looks like this could possibly even stretch out and through to 2013 now. Okay, what about Sandfire Resources? Another one we're watching because it's produced its first concentrate from its Degrassa, I think that's how you say it, project. What's the outlook now for the company and for copper as well? That's right, it has produced its first concentrate, which is good news for the company. Uh, pretty much largely expected by the market because this project uh, has remained on budget, on schedule so far. Uh, certainly key for Sandfire Resources. This DeGrossa project is 100% owned by the company. Uh, it's, a, it's a copper and gold project in Western Australia. Uh, it's to produce around 70,000 tonnes per annum once it is up and running full steam uh, with cash costs of around $1 to $1.10 per pound which is uh, very good compared to some of the other copper producers on the Australian markets as well. Now copper in general the outlook remains quite positive. Uh, Bell Potter have an average price of around $3.50 out through to 2015 on copper at the moment. Uh, this is largely on demand versus supply in the copper market at the moment. Um, a large amount of new supply has been either deferred or cancelled. Uh, certainly one big example of that recently was BHP with their Olympic Dam, which was to have significant copper resources. But China demand uh, still seems to be quite strong. Certainly not what it used to be uh, through 2007 to 2011 where there was significant uh, growth of around 14-15% per year in copper. But even if that was to halve or even worse, uh, still new supply is going to be needed in the copper market. Uh, so this mine for Sandfire Resources has an eight-year life. Uh, certainly the company will be looking around the surrounding tenements to extend that mine life out and that will be a driver of value for the stock moving forward. But uh, total cash costs are low, as I said, compared to other copper producers. But this stock may look a little bit pricey in terms of just being fully valued. Uh, you might want to look at uh, other investors might be looking at some other stocks such as Panost, uh, which does offer uh, an increasing dividend and possibly some better production growth. Okay, and uh, what about more broadly today, looking at the market? We're making some nice gains on some pretty light volumes. The resources leading us higher. We've got the RBA decision out at 2.30. Do you think we're likely to see much movement in equities following that? Well, it is green on screen today, and it's the fourth day of gains for the Australian market now. It's being driven by the materials and energy sector. Uh, we saw some better risk sentiment last night. US and European markets were higher. This fed through into commodities, which are high, and that's really driving our market today. Uh, there's a few stocks in particular standing out. Santos has up 2.5%. Up uh, it's bought some of Central Petroleum's uh, exploration tenements up in uh, the Northern Territory. And Fortescue Metals, a lot of coverage today after it successfully appealed that high court decision over 
over misleading investors. Uh, but today the RBA is in focus and I think we will see a reaction uh, not only on the market but particularly on the Aussie dollar once this announcement is made because we've got the majority of economists saying that they're expecting the RBA will wait until later this year, November, possibly December. But then on the other hand, we have the mar market pricing in quite a, a significant chance of a 25 basis point rate cut today. So either way, I think we'll see a bit of a reaction in the Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar has been trading largely sideways this morning, just waiting for this. It has remained quite firm. Uh, so that will be one to watch around 2.30 p.m. when they do announce it. I think what the market will be looking for from the RBA will be comments around Asian growth. We have certainly see some disappointing data out of China and Japan recently. Um, also some comments on what their, what their views are in terms of the investment cycle. We have heard comments from them recently that they are looking to try and find the peak of the investment cycle, certainly before any further aggressive easing. Uh, so today the Aussie market performing very well, uh, most sectors in the green today.